All right, I have 11.30. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Megan Cutler. My colleague Bryce Bardstein is also here. Um, and we're just here to answer any questions you have. So it's going to be kind of open ended. I don't have any like presentation plan. So um, this is just to answer your questions. So just speak up if you have one or feel free to type it in the chat if you prefer. I'm sorry, were you talking to us or is that maybe background noise? Well, okay. is it just open? Hi, Megan. Uh, this is Tim Smith. I have a question regarding the scoring section for quality education section C. Um, up until now, we didn't know how to do it. So we were calculating as best as the uh, information we could put together. And our understanding was that it was going to be at 75% or higher of the state averages. So we calculated our state average off the last five years. And then when we got the scoring data yesterday, we saw that our calculations were different than what is on the website. And we'd like to know how you arrived at those averages. Absolutely. Um, OK, so. I will start with this page here. So you are correct that we are looking at statewide averages. However, we are separating them by grade cluster. So that's elementary, middle and high school and by the years of CCRPI data available and included in the year over year calculation. So uh, say your school only has data for 2015 through 2018. So your threshold would be for here, 2015 through 2017, because as mentioned before, we cannot calculate the change from 2017 to 2018 because they are not comparable. Um, so that cannot also be included in the average calculation. So it uses this 2015 through 2017. Um, I can show you example here. So as you can see, we have this elementary school right here and it has 2015, 16, 17 and 18. So over here we have calculated the year over year. We've calculated the year over year change from 2015 to 2016. 2016 to 2017, but not 2018 to 2019 because we don't have 2019 data and not 2017. Yeah, and I've already got the data to the IRS and the revenue rule. Yeah, that's the only thing that Please send me the email because I didn't get it. I don't get these emails. I know, don't just, I'm having a bad day. Can you just. I'm just going to mute everyone really quickly. Well, you are not muted. OK, sorry about that. We were picking up some background noise. Um, OK, so back here. Um, again, we have 15 to 16, 16 to 17, no 17 through 18. We will not be calculating 7 through 18 um, for any schools and then 18 through 19 here. So. We come over here, we see that we have a po positive average. We have this average score which only includes years 2015 through 2017, because those are the only years that are included in the year over year change calculation. So we have our applicable 25th percentile is 64.7. That is 
the 25th percentile for elementary schools with data for 2015 through 2017. So the idea here is that schools are only being compared with comparable schools or years with schools with the same amount of years of CCRPI data. Um, so that could possibly be where the difference was coming from. So I just want to clarify again, this is Tim. Um, um, so you're saying that if so you have data for all the years that are required mm -hmm. and the statewide average is how you're you're using the statewide average to do the calculations the overall calculations mm -hmm. um then i i must be doing something really wrong because i'm i'm coming up with a statewide average for the five years of 76.52 then when you get 75 percent of that 76.52. I get a statewide average for high school at 57.39. And the statewide average for a high school is what I'm looking at here on this chart is 76.4. I mean, that's significantly different. Yeah, um, so I'm not totally sure where the difference is coming from. Um, we will absolutely look into that, but we have checked this data a lot of times. Um, so I will look into that after this and we will make sure that we address it in Q&A. OK, thank you okay, very much. Thank you very much. Sure. OK, I see we had a comment asking to go over the presentation of item C, so we can definitely do that. So um, first we have this scoring directions document. Um, we start up here with school eligibility, just restating that you still have to meet all the baseline requirements at the top of the QAP section and then the three options here. So. We will be looking at option C. So here are the instructions for option C, and it explains what each worksheet is. We have the first one, which is the scores eligibility sheet. That is here. So all this sheet is going to show is the school's identifiers, the system ID and name, school ID and name, and grade cluster with E for elementary, M for middle school, and H for high school. And then this column here saying yes or no, you qualify under option C or an A, meaning that there isn't sufficient data um, to qualify under option C, meaning that it, it's not that the scores are too low, it's that there are not enough scores available for option C. So <clears throat> in that case, we would use the cluster level data. So I'm going to look at all schools, all middle schools in Cher Cherokee County, and the middle school cluster in Cherokee County does qualify under option C. So this applicant, well, in theory, I don't even think these schools are in the same zone. It's just random picked. Um, but this applicant could use or would use the regular for elementary and high school and then cluster level data for their middle school. And here is the methodology um tab so it includes all the same school info and the last column is the same um, just simply says does it qualify or not but this includes our methodology so we have all of the raw ccrpi scores here we have the year over year change calculations you can click through everything and figure out how we calculated everything um, and then we say if it's positive or not. And then you have over here your average score, 
the years of data availability and your applicable 25th percentile, then is it in the top 75%? Um, so we don't expect anybody to do this math. Um, however, we do strongly encourage you to confirm these CCRPI scores for your school um, because our final scoring determinations are going to be based on the actual scores on the Department of Education's website. So if there happens to be an error here in our raw data for CCRPI scores and it shows that it's eligible and it turns out that it is not, it still would not qualify. Um, so just putting that disclaimer out there that you are strongly encouraged to confirm your CCRPI scores. Um, that is basically it. We tried to make this as simple as possible. Really, all you need to do is go look at the sheet, see if you qualify or you need to use cluster level data and then confirm your CCRPI scores here. And that is it. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. You're breaking up a little bit. Could you repeat? All schools qualification versus specific cluster. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, so we have added a new provision this year to quality education areas. Um, we kind of partially had it last year, but um, so if we go down here, we have many school, Georgia schools have fewer grades than a full grade cluster. I'm oh, sorry. Some recently established schools do not have data for options A through C. For such schools, the applicant may utilize scores of the applicable grade cluster for the school district. So here we have our middle school. And it says NA here because there is not sufficient document, or I'm sorry, sufficient data, meaning they don't have enough CCRPI scores to qualify under option C. Um, so because they do not have enough data, they may qualify, or this applicant in theory, may qualify using the cluster level data. So this is a middle school in Cherokee County so we would look at all middle schools in Cherokee County, and they do qualify. Does that make sense? It's just opening up more options, basically, um, understanding that there may be new schools or you know different circumstances that mean that there is not adequate CCRPI data available, but um, you know, we still want to create an avenue for these schools if possible. So that is where this comes from. So if there's insufficient data to qualify under all of the three other options, you can use cluster level data. Thank you. Hey, Megan, this is Mitchell. I, I came in late and I apologize. Sure. But so if 
I happen to be in the ball ground middle school district. I have a project that's in that district, the Canton and the Cherokee high school that both do. Even though ball ground individually doesn't, if I meet, if, if it meets the middle school, all schools, I'm in the clear. Correct. Yes, because your middle school would not have enough data to qualify okay. under option C, not that the scores don't qualify because that would indicate no. NA meaning that there's not adequate data to even assess under this option, um, then yes, you can use the middle school cluster in Cherokee County. Now, if Ball Ground Middle School was a no, I'm not eligible to use the cluster. Correct. Even though it says all yes, I would. If, if Ball Ground Middle School was a no, the middle school, even though it says yes, I'm not eligible to use that. Correct, because okay. this is the this is based on the average of all middle schools in Cherokee County. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for Thank the, you for the clarification. clarification. Sure. Hey, Megan, oh, this is uh, John McKnight. Uh, uh, can you scroll? I want to I have a question about Canton Elementary. Can you scroll right a little bit? Sure. Um, here we can go to the other one that actually has the data. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Thanks. Canton Elementary. OK. So my question is, when you're looking at the CCRPI scores, um, not talking about year over year change, but talking about the 75th percentile, mm -hmm. I guess what I'm struggling with is why would you exclude 2018? Because the percentile calculation isn't looking at anything year over year. It's just saying over this time period, were you in that? top 75 percentile, which that shouldn't really be impacted on any change in methodology because the, you know, whatever percentile you're in for that particular year, is just going to stand on that one year. So I'm, I'm just kind of wondering why the, you know, for instance, 2018 would be um, excluded from that calculation. Sure. Um, so the reason for that is that we wanted to have schools be assessed in relation to other schools with the same years of data. Um, some parts behind that are one, um, you know, the methodology change between 2017 and 2018 means that, um, you know, if somebody had, say, 2015 through 2017 scores and someone else has 2015 through 2018 scores, then we can calculate the year over year change for 2015 to 16, 2016 through 2017, but obviously can't do 2017 to 2018. Then if you go over to the average score, this applicant with 2015, 16, 17 and 18 would have an average score of all four of those. And the person with 2015, 16 and 17 would only have the average of 2015 through 17. And the, those two competing against one another, if you'll put it that way, um, it could create an unfair advantage for one or the other. The idea is that um, because the, you know, the scores and the data kind of vary so much, we wanted to make sure that we are only comparing schools that are actually comparable. Um, just trying to make sure that we are creating opportunities and, um, you know, doing it as fairly as possible. Sure, um, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably put in a Q&A with a little bit more um, detail, uh, but I had always just kind of looked at the QAP as, you know, the year over year change being positive, excluding the, uh, you know, difference from uh, 18 to 19. Sure, you know, methodology changed. You can't really compare those. And then the 75th percentile calculation is really um, being separate and apart from one another. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I, thanks for clarifying that, but I, I might um, put in a Q&A with some more detail. Sure. Yeah, that, that's totally fine. Um, and, you know, anybody who has any questions, please submit them through Q&A because we want to make sure we can clarify as much as possible before the round starts. Um, but no, they are not separate from each other. They are very much intertwined, um, which is why we have this table here um, breaking out the different 
percentiles um, for you know each subset of schools. I have a question. Um, why, why is Baltimore Public School Policy um, data just now being released? We're two and a half months away from application due date, and we calculated through C best we could based on the information we were given in the, in the original QAP. And similar to someone else who spoke before us, our calculation is significantly different from yours based on the information that was given. We have made assumptions that our calculation was right on getting these points, and we're down the road pursuing a, a, pro a project, and now all of a sudden we're not getting the points that we thought we were getting. It would be nice to have gotten this information back when the original QAP was, was released. Well, I don't disagree with you. Um, we, you know, this being such a large data set and having a somewhat complicated calculation, it was really important that we spent a lot of time quality reviewing and when it was posted is when it was ready, unfortunately. And, and I want to add if well, there's discrepancies and calculations to submit your discrepancies through Q&A. OK, sure, we can. Based on what we read, we can show you how we calculated. It was similar to basically the same thing that the gentleman spoke before us. We calculated it just like he did. I see a hand up. Feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah, hey Megan, this is Philip Searles. I'm kind of bouncing around between some of these groups, and so I apologize if this question's been asked. One of the things that we've kind of noticed as we're looking for site select is we're looking for sites every year is that historically with the some of the same criteria, some of the big criteria looking for stable communities, um, you know, tr rural transportation, things like that. Uh, there, there, there are parts of the state that are being neglected from a task credit perspective. Okay. Um, just areas that just that, you know, and it, it could very well be that this is from a scoring perspective that we don't think that the state, the state determined that affordable housing doesn't really need, isn't really needed in those communities. However, with the, you know, growing need of this all over, you know, we're hearing from more rural communities and, uh, you know, ex-urban uh, suburbs of Atlanta that are saying, you know, we need this and then we start looking into it and it, they don't score. Um, has there been any discussions inside the DCA about doing like a, a, a somewhat of a mass overhaul on the scoring side to say, OK, identifying which areas historically have not received allocations of tax credits over the past 10, 15 years? Why aren't they? And is there something that you guys are looking at that will change the scoring to allow a little more diversity of, of um, allocations across the state? Yes. Um, so one, yes, we have been trying to work toward that and address um, that we know there are some areas that do not receive tax credits in general, um, but also we have commissioned a statewide housing needs assessment and that will inform a lot of our policies in the QAP after we get the results of those. So um yes we we are aware that there are some places that don't score well and we are absolutely trying to address that both through the housing needs assessment and by things like having separate nofas um for areas or types of projects that you know just don't do well under the qap as it's currently written However, I we would absolutely appreciate um, you know any feedback or additional information you could provide on that if you would like to submit it through the um, year round QAP survey that's on the website.
Um, I see a question. Would you also use a cluster score if your school system K through six grades are split between a primary K through three and elementary four through six? So you would still qualify using those schools. You would only use the cluster level data if those schools did not have sufficient data um, to be assessed under this option. So, um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I understand your question. Um, yeah, so you only use cluster level data if you don't have adequate data for the school. Um, and if you have a school that is K through six, um, you would say you had to use the cluster level data. You would use the elementary school cluster um, to qualify grades K through five and the middle school cluster to qualify grade six. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please feel free to um, elaborate on your question or ask more questions. Uh, I think I see another hand just. Hey, Megan, hey, uh, John, John I, I, um, I, 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 two, two things I want to mention. One is a comment on that question. Um, just, you know, I heard a couple other folks talking about their calculation of the 75th percentile in the school. Um, you know, and, and I may have misinterpreted what some other folks said, but the calculation of 75% of the state average would be different than the calculation of the 75th percentile of the state average. Um, I don't know if I'm thinking about that right, or maybe I misinterpreted somebody else's comment, but just wanted to wanted to throw that out there. Um, second comment is taking a break from schools for a second. I noticed that the uh, the stable community scoring data, the local health and economic indicators was posted, but it only has the 2019 data available. Uh, are we only um, able to use the 2019 data for points in that section in 2022? So um, we'll still be allowed to use 2019 and 2020. However, um, the Census Bureau put off the publication of 2020 ACS data until oh. next month. So once those are available, we will add them, um, update the currently posted um, data workbook, and you will still be able to use 2019 or 2020 um, data. And we have changed it so that this year you can use different years for different indicators. So previously, if you were going to use 2019 data for you know, say income, you would also have to use 2019 data for insurance, but we have changed that so that if you want to use 2019 data for income and 2020 data for insurance, that's totally fine. Um, you can use whichever data set works best for you. Now, now uh, and, and, and forgive me if I might have missed, missed, uh, missed this in the QAP or a blast previously, but this is the first I'm seeing that the 2018 ACS data will not be available to use for points, which that's, I mean, that could have a pretty large impact um, on sites that people are, you know, chasing. And somebody had mentioned already being down the road on some sites, which I think a number of us are. Um, there's some sites that are probably going to lose points that if they can't use that 2018 data. And uh, I understood, uh, you know, one of the um, goals of the 2022 QAP was to not have sites that um, could lose points. Uh, so. I just want to point that out if that 2018 ACS data is not available. I mean, this is kind of a late change that is going to uh, could, could really make a difference on a lot, of, a lot of sites that folks are down the road with. So um, actually, this is not a change. Um, last year we did 2018 and 2019. The year before we did 2017 and 2018. So it's just the natural progression, the most recent two years. So it's 2019 and 2020. Um, and Yes, I mean, I I hear that they there might be some differences. I'm sure there are differences between, you know, the average of 2018, 2019 or, or whatever. But yes, this is, um, you know, this this is us just following how we've previously done this section. Does the, does the QEP say the last two years? I'm not sure that it does. Pull it up. And, and the, re the reason I bring that up is because 
if comments had not been made in you know prior QAP workshops and things in the fall about the goal being to not change the QAP so sites don't lose points, you know, I think everybody would have just assumed we would go on that same, you know, two-year cycle, you know, go to 2019, 2020. But just because I think a lot of folks were probably going off of that, um, you know, what was said in, uh, in earlier meetings regarding not changing the QAP so sites lose points. Um, I mean, this is this is kind of a kind of a major change, um, kind of late in the game, you know, 90 days out before applications go in. Um. So I, I am familiar with what you were talking about. However, I believe that was related to the 2021 QAP. Um, we, you know, added and took away some sections this year. Um, and yeah, I, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure um, if that is something that was expressed for this year. Um, my understanding is that that was just related to the 2021 QAP. This is average RPI score the same time period in the top 70% of all statewide average scores for the grade cluster. It does not say exclude 2000. In 18, it says to exclude the year over year average in the first. Item under under C, but it does not say it in the second item. And then and so we, we did an average based including the 18. And that's that's the primary difference in our, our score calculation. And it does impact projects that we're, we're looking at. I appreciate you review that again. OK, so, um, you know, this is, this is obviously the reason why we intended and expected to have lots of questions, um, but. The second uh, bullet here, I can share my screen. The second bullet says average CCRPI score over the same time period is in the top 75% of all statewide average scores for the grade cluster. So um, in our example, where a school only has scores for 2015 through 2018, we know that only 2015, 16, and 17 would be able to be included in the year over year change average calculation because you cannot calculate 2017 through 2018 and so that period is 2015 through 2017 and that would be the period uh, for the statewide average scores we would be looking at scores average scores from 2015 to 2017 so it i understand how it's not totally clear in the wording and we will make sure to um you know put out some more clear um, instructions and clarify things, but that is what over the same time period means. All right. I'll from uh, 2014 to 2000, and uh, year 15 to 19, are you excluding year 18 in that calculation as well? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? If a project, we're looking at scores from 15 all the way to 19 for five years, are you excluding 18 in that calculation? No, no. If, if the year is included in the year over year change calculation, then it is also included in the average CCRPI score 75% calculation. So if the school had 2015 through 2019, then the average that would be used would be here for 2015 through 2019. Are you limiting? I'm sorry. Are you limiting eliminating year 17 from that calculation? No. Um, no, if a school had data for 2015, 16, 17, 18 and 19, then we would be able to calculate the year over year change from 2015 to 16, 16 to 17, and 18 to 19, meaning that all five years would be included in the year over year change calculation. So all five years would also be included in the 25th percentile calculation. It is, it is just the 2017 to 2018 
number. That number that's that's correct. Um, okay, so lower housing stability score, first and such, da, 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 da. Will DCA replace this tiebreaker section? Um, so we were actually able to um, get Enterprise to send us the data that would have been underlying Opportunity 360. So we will have that available if needed for tiebreakers. I see another hand. Feel free to unmute yourself. Hey, this is uh, Tim Smith again. Uh, I asked the initial question about the calculations of the 75%. Uh, could you pull back up that section C? Because uh, there was a comment made just a minute ago about the difference between 75% and 75 percentile. Mm -hmm. and, and in the QAP, it's, it says 75%, not 75 percentile. So that's what we've been calculating on. Yes, so um, we say in the top, oops, I didn't mean to go there. We say in the top 75% of all statewide, statewide average scores. So the way this is calculated is by determining the 25th percentile of average scores, meaning that everyone above that 25th percentile is in the top 75%. That sounds like it would be almost every school in the state then. Uh, it might be close, but. Um, sure. Megan, how are we to know that up until that was released on Tuesday? Um, I mean, I, I don't have a great answer for, you know, how to better interpret this, um, you know. That's the problem. We read that as 75% of the statewide average, which is what it reads. And so we, it's an easy calculation for us. It says top 75%. Well, but we didn't have, we didn't have the data to calculate 75% percentile. We didn't have it. And it reads to us 75% average. And I believe that's what, that's the complaint that everybody has is we, we read that as a 75% of the average. It's a very simple calculation for us to make. And at this point, then you come out with 75% percentile, which is, a, that's a viable way to do this, but until two days ago, we didn't know that that's what your intention was. It's not the 75th percentile, and it's not 75% of the average. It is the top 75%, meaning that they are over the 25th percentile. So if you're looking at the average, you need to find the 25th percentile of that average because everything above that is in the top 75 percent. That's the problem is we didn't know until two days ago. And the way it reads, for us, it looks like 75 percent. And you know, we, we've got options. We were down the road working on a number of different things and all of a sudden our project is not scoring as well as we thought it was. I, I hear you and I'm, I'm sorry for the confusion, but, um, you know, we wrote things as clearly as we could in the moment. We, you know, absolutely will clarify, but we did say top 75%. Um, so I, you know, I, we will clarify, but there's really not much that we can do about what the QAP says. And again, for your interpretation, uh, please submit your interpretation with your calculations as a Q&A. Yes, that would definitely be helpful so that we understand, you know, where all the confusion is coming from and how to best clarify. Megan, I think we may have missed a question in the chat. Um, um, will we share that data? I think you're talking about the Opportunity 360 data. Um, I will have to check on that. Um, if it, it will probably depend on how Enterprise feels about it, but I will check on that and make sure to follow up. And did we get to the question about using a combination of A, B, and C in quality education? Um, okay. 
Can we take points if our schools qualify for points using a combination of options in A, B, and C? Yes. Yes, you may qualify different schools using different options under quality education areas. Megan, just one more comment on the uh, on stable communities data. You sure. mentioned earlier that the uh, 2020 data was going to be released. Um, I believe that there was only a press release that came out um, a couple of days ago where they had uh, said that data was going to be released in, the, in late March. So, I mean, we've really had no insight into if that 2020 updated ACS, ACS data was going to be released um, at all this year. You know, so um, just again, throwing it out there that, you know, we've been kind of running, going under that assumption that the 18 and 19 ACS data would still be available to use for points just because there was just an absence of clarity from the Census Department on when or if the 2020 data was going to be available until uh, until very recently. So wanted to make um, that point. Okay, well, I will also write that down. Okay, um, yes, I will just note your comment and make sure that it's something that we discuss. Um, I understand how it maybe was not clear enough. Um, we did get the Census Bureau notification a few months ago, um, but I, I can see how there's confusion. I can't really give you a great answer right now, but I will make sure that it's something that we discuss and clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I'm sorry, this is Jordan Wilson of Vantage, and I'm jumping around meetings, so I think I missed what I was coming here to ask about was with the uh, local health and economic indicators that was that were published, I guess, on the website yesterday, be in 2019. I guess what you guys were discussing is the availability of 2020 and then also the assumed usage of 2018. Is that, did I miss that part? Um, no, you're, you're correct. Um, so what we were talking about is that the uh, 2019 data was published on the DCA website um, yesterday. And it is just partial. We plan to update it by adding the 2020 data whenever it is released by the Census Bureau, if it is released before the application submission deadline. Um, and that is the reason why we have this line right here. Um, if the Census Bureau or CDC conduct data updates between November 1st, 2021 and the application submission deadline, the applicant may claim points based on the higher statistics set. Um, so the idea there being that we, you know, we use the most recent two years of data um, and if the 2020 becomes available, then we will upload that and you can use 2019 or 2020. Um, but currently, yes, all you have to look at right now is the 2019 data. If it does, it does not become not available, available, will you will look you back look at 2018 20. or you stick to only 2019? The plan is to stick to only 2019, um, but I will make sure that that's something that we discuss and clarify as well. And again, please, any questions about data availability and any implications, uh, please submit through Q&A.
We do have 15 more minutes for a full range of scoring topics. Megan, we have a question on previous projects. Hmm. On previous projects, what dictates where a previous project is located? Often on the DCA provided map system, previous projects are shown to be outside a city boundary, but the application of the previous project shows it is in fact incorporated in a city. So um, one, we are aware that there are some errors on the map and um, we have been working to clear those up, which is why we have not uh, reposted the link to the map. Uh, that should be cleared up, fingers crossed, by the end of the week. Um, however, all of the correct information is posted um, in the um, funding round selected projects um, spreadsheets. So you can check there to make sure you have the correct information. Um, However, even 
after these fixes are made, there will still be some that show up as outside of a city boundary when they are actually inside of a city boundary. Um, and at least in a few cases that this is because um, their site entrance or you know where the coordinates that they gave us essentially is in an unincorporate, unincorporated area, but the majority of the property is in the incorporated area. Um, so it's considered within city limits. Um, we talked about how to address these and decided that it would not be appropriate for us to um, you know, man manually alter where these properties um, appear. So it's that's why it's very important that you know use the map for a reference, but make sure that you go to the list um, for that applicable year and check whether that application is within or outside of the city boundary. Because there are at least a few um, examples of that.
Uh, for sharing amenities between a phase development, this requires, requires DCA's prior consent for application. Is that prior consent obtained via a pre-application or some other process? So that is not under my purview. Um, so I will make sure to mark that down so that we can post a Q&A and the appropriate person can answer that question for you. I would say that Sherry had been talking about the, the waivers and stuff, and there's still a couple minutes in the construction services if you had that opportunity and didn't get it yet. Yes, that's a good point. She may still have a few minutes to chat about that. Properties entrance lat long used for the 0.5 mile radius determining an undesirable. Um, again, that is also outside of my purview. Um, let's see, that is being discussed in the compliance and asset management breakout group. However, I can also mark it down for us to answer in a Q&A. Looks like we're coming up on the last minute and uh, the last opportunities. If anyone has any questions. We are at our time limit. As a let me thank everybody for attending and participating, asking questions. Please, any questions we raise that you can submit through QA, please do. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll have a 15 minute break until 1245, and then we will report back to the all attendees discussion. That is the last uh, meeting on the access information document. Thank you, see you soon.